Welcome to this 2 to you topic video that looks at sustainable rice fish farming in Jamalpa. It's an example of small scale sustainable food production. This is part of paper 2, unit C, the challenge of resource management. Jamalpa is a district in northern Bangladesh, which is an LIC, where farming accounts for around 57% of income, mainly rice, wheat and jute. The farmers here are mainly subsistence farmers. This means that they're producing food for themselves and their families, but not to sell commercially. However, life in this region is difficult and these farmers live in poverty, struggling to grow enough to meet their needs. As a result, Charity Practical Action has stepped in to support the farmers in increasing their income and improving the diet of local people. This has been achieved through the introduction of rice fish culture, a small scale type of agriculture. This involves small local breeds of fish being added into the rice paddy fields. The rice plants protect the fish from predators by hiding them, which means that birds don't eat them, and the fish fertilise the rice with their droppings. They also eat the insects that would have eaten the rice plants, and they enable oxygen to be circulated around the plants more effectively. This type of farming has been really successful and has increased rice yields by 10% and has also provided protein rich fish which has improved the diet of local people. And because the farmers are growing more rice they have a surplus which they can sell at local markets so as well as having more food they also have more money which improves the quality of life. So how does rice fish farming work? The first stage is construction this happens with the farmer choosing a suitable site with the support of Practical Action, which is a non-governmental organisation or an NGO. They need to choose a site that is not going to be washed away during times of flood, which is a big consideration with Bangladesh's monsoon season. Once a site has been picked, workers from Practical Action help the farmer to build a dike around the edge of the field. These dikes are about 60 centimetres high and are in place to stop the fish escaping from the rice fields but also to enable other vegetables to be planted around the edge, which increases food production further. The farmer also needs to dig a ditch for the fish to live in during the dry season when the rice fields are not waterlogged. The second stage is planting and stocking. Rice plants are then placed around 35 centimetres apart and the ditch is filled with water halfway up. A small amount of lime is added to purify the water and a bit of natural fertiliser, in this case manure, is added. The water level is then increased to 12 to 15 centimetres when the rice starts to shoot. At the same time, small fish are also released into the ditch to acclimatise them to the rice field water before they're released properly into the rice fields. When the fish are released into the rice fields, the farmer has to increase the water level again so there is enough water for the growing plants and the fish. The final stage is harvesting. It takes between four and five months for the rice to grow fully. When the crop is ready for harvest, the rice is picked before the rice field is drained to collect the fish, which can be easily caught in the ditch. Rice fish farming is an example of a sustainable strategy to increase food supply. Sustainable solutions have the following features in common. They are small scale. They improve the quality of life for individual communities rather than whole regions or countries. They're easy to manage and they are relatively cheap. They use appropriate technology, things like basic machinery that's cheap and easy to maintain. This is better than using complex machinery that will require specialist skills to operate and maintain. Sustainable projects need to be managed by the local community rather than relying on other people. For example, local people build and maintain them so that if something breaks down, they know how to carry out repairs. Local people also need to be fully involved in the decision making. They think about what they need, where they want to build their project, how big the project will be. It's not just telling the people involved what they need. Therefore, there's more buy-in from them and it is much more likely to be effective. Non-governmental organisations have no government funding and they rely on donations. For example, practical action in this case. They work with LICs and NEEs to improve water and food security. 
NGOs are important as they give local communities the support and the skills they need to get their sustainable food projects up and running. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on rice fish farming in Bangladesh. Thank you for watching.